Welcome to statistics lecture. So when we are getting into statistics, the entire statistics can be divided across three divisions. The very first one going to be descriptive statistics and the second one going to be inferential statistics where you are trying to perform univariate analysis of inferential and the third one going to be same inferential statistics where you are trying to perform with bivariate and multivariate. So where descriptive statistics going to help us to study the entire structure of your data for example like understanding measures of central tendency or understanding measures of dispersion we are trying to create some visualizations like histograms box plots bar plots scatter plots and we are trying to understand about our data and then finally we will be using skewness and kurtosis and we are trying to understand about our data and when it comes to your inferential statistics which is used to make decisions so based on our analysis we are trying to make decisions on top of our population for example, we try to take a sample, we analyze the sample and we make decisions on top of your population. For that, we are using inferential statistics. So we'll be going deep into it now. By using descriptive statistics, where we use it or when we use descriptive is, if your goal is, I want to perform data understanding as a data scientist or AI person or even a data analyst, so I need to use descriptive statistics or I want to perform EDA, exploratory data analysis, even then you are able to start using your, uh, what is that, descriptive statistics. Based on your data understanding or based on your descriptive statistics, you are trying to perform data cleaning operations. So you do that data cleaning using Python and all that, right? So you are trying to perform data cleaning based on your data understanding. That's where we will be using descriptive statistics. And next, we will be going with our inferential statistics. Example, for example, I want to make quality inferences. So decisions on top of population based on sample analysis or what need to be the price of an iPhone. So entry level price maximizing their revenue. So for that, I will be using concepts like law of large numbers or I will be using central limit theorem. And for example, I want to understand what need to be the what need to be the average amount to maximize the loan amount payment. So the we can say like the range of it, what is the lower level, what is the higher level of your loan payment. For that, I'm able to use the concept like confidence intervals. And can you give me the chances of buying a particular iPhone at different price distributions? Then we will be using a concept like your probability distributions. Now see, if you look into the segment very easily, now if I want to make for example, what need to be the average price of an entry level iPhone, then I will be using concepts like law of large numbers or central limit theorem. If I want to explain the range of your entry level iPhone range, what is the lower price can be? What is the maximum lower price can be? Then I will be using a concept like your uh, confidence interval. If I want to give the probability distribution of each pricing, what are the chances of a probability of buying a particular phone at this pricing, different probability distributions, then I will be using a concept like probability distributions within probability again you have two types discrete probability distribution and a continuous probability distribution so within discrete probability distribution you got a concept like probability mass function and a cumulative distribution function the same thing within continuous probability distribution as well you got probability density function and a cumulative distribution function or density function and within your confidence interval as well you got z tables in order to identify the range of your particular pricing you have a z table and you have a t table so when you will be using z table is when your number of recorded values are greater than 30 then we are able to go with our z table so we will be seeing how exactly it works and uh, we go with t table when your number of recorded values are less than 30 we will be going with our t tables so that's the difference and then we will be going with our inferential statistics especially multivariate when so if i want to for example if you see what are the parameters which influence the iphone pricing so i want to understand so now if you are looking into the univariate we are not comparing the price of an iphone means like with other parameters we are taking only standalone price of the iphone and we are trying to understand what can be the average pricing using law of large numbers or central limit theorem or we are trying to use so again you can simply ask me Kant, in order to identify the price of an iphone i can simply calculate a mean even we are doing mean here but you are trying to collect a small portion of the data you are making a decision on the entire world what need to be the entry level iphone pricing so in order to do that you are 
following certain principles called as law of large numbers or central limit theorem to make sure whichever the sample analysis you have made it is equal to the population for that you are using law of large numbers and central limit theorem now if you see whether it is central limit theorem law of large numbers or confidence interval or probability we are taking only price parameter and we are trying to understand the behavior of the price with the price itself now if i want to understand how the price is getting impacted based on various other parameters market or location or maybe like the type of audience who are buying it if i want to compare the pricing with various other parameters then i will be going with a concept called as hypothesis testing so what are the parameters which influence the iphone pricing then i will be using concepts like again price location again within location bangalore mumbai kerala etc they are the input parameters based on the location the way people buy it going to change it now for that if i want to study deeper relationship between input parameter versus output parameter then i'm going with machine learning so if i want to study a surface level means like relationship between input parameters and your output parameter then we are able to use hypothesis testing and within hypothesis we have the steps for example you need to define a p value probability value we need to understand what exactly meant by significance level alpha value what is meant by null hypothesis alternate hypothesis what is a type 1 error type 2 error what exactly parametric and a non parametric statistical test so we need to understand this concept only then we are able to perform hypothesis and finally if you want to study how output parameter is related or changing with respect to time based parameter then we will be using concepts like forecasting so now this is an overview of your entire statistics now based on your purpose you want to pick the right statistical approach or a right statistical technique you want to pick it based on your approach for example you are directly dealing with where you want to identify how the output is changing based on input parameters you want to study the deeper relation you directly go with ml then all the theory you are learning on statistics there is no need practically but the important segments of your entire statistics is understanding how exactly descriptive statistics works and your understanding all these concepts in a high level going to help you to survive in the job market or even to crack the interviews related to data science and data analytics so i hope you got a clear understanding so let's start with how exactly this descriptive statistics works and what is this eda so let's see that in our next video